Okay, we have recently spent way too much time watching these street interviews in Russia done by the 1420 channel. As it's almost one year into the war, we think many of us are left wondering, why on earth are there no big protests happening in Russia, whether it be against the special military operation or Putin's regime itself? Since the beginning of the war, only rather small protests took place in big Russian cities such as Moscow or St. Petersburg, but they were swiftly dispersed by the Russian authorities. More often than not, people who participated in these protests have also been arrested. We're going to borrow a citation here from a liberal Russo-Ukrainian journalist to better illustrate the situation. He said, You see, every time I went out to protest and found myself running away from the riot police in fear, I would wonder where everybody else was. The lack of protesters meant it was easy to catch the few dissidents that did show up. In this video, we would like to have a look at the most common narratives the Russian propaganda uses, and how these narratives are tailored to the mindset of most Russians. We'd also like to give you some insight into Russia's demography, which is also a crucial part when one tries to understand the nation as a whole. So who exactly lives in Russia? Russia has a population of 140 million, less than half of that of the US, and the population has some rather fascinating characteristics, from low birth rate to high death rates, and a negative net migration rate. It's no secret that Russia's population is facing some challenges. Look, the life expectancy in Russia is only 72 years, China, on the other hand, whose GDP per capita is almost identical to Russia, has a life expectancy of 78 years, a whopping six-year difference. But what's unique about Russia is the enormously high rate of mortality from preventable causes, such as alcohol and smoking. Russia is also not immune to the global trend of the aging population. This means that the country has a relatively large number of elderly people and a decreasing number of young people. But that's not all. Another interesting aspect of Russia's demography is its ethnic makeup. Ethnic Russians make up the majority of the population with other groups, such as Tatars, Bashkirs, and Chuvash making up smaller percentages. This means that Russia is not as diverse as some other countries. The population is also quite urbanized, with above 70% of the people living in cities, but the cities themselves differ quite significantly. Russia has 16 cities with more than a million inhabitants, the most significant ones being, of course, Moscow and St. Petersburg. Other important cities include Novosibirsk, Yekaterburg, and Ninzy Novogod. About 34.5 million people, 24% of Russia's total population, live in cities with at least a million people. Of that, 16.5 million live in cities other than Moscow or St. Petersburg. Of course, these cities are the home of most Russian firms and concentrate wealthier and better educated individuals. Russia is also rated as the most unequal country of the world's major economies. The situation with inequality in Russia is wrapped up in the context of the really quite extraordinary past quarter century of history, with the collapse of the Soviet system leading to privatization of state-owned establishments in the 1990s. This privatization gave people in power, or people who were in the right place at the right time, enormous opportunities, but also led to numerous companies shutting down due to the embezzlement of just poor management in general. This left many of the former employees of the factories in a desperate situation, while some so-called oligarchs were sunbathing on their billion-dollar yachts. Look, during the privatization period, the GTP per capita plummeted drastically, and it only reached the pre-collapse level in the late 2000s. And this information, in particular, is really crucial. And bear with us, this all is necessary to understand in order to understand the mood in Russian society. The fact that the living standard has been plummeting in the 1990s made a lot of people question the change in regime, and this is what exactly played into Putin's hands. Putin has been admittedly praising the Soviet regime and letting people believe that the dissolution of the USSR was somehow caused by the West, that only he can restore what was good about the Soviet Union. By further fueling the glorification that has already been present among people, who have admittedly lived better lives in the Soviet Union, he already had one key element any propaganda needs. Hope. Hope that this regime will bring people what they desire. He mostly praises Russians for being tough people, who can weather a lot, and that good days are coming. Russians also have an issue with their national pride. You see, Russia is nowhere as significant of an economy as the USSR had been. Yet the propaganda seems to have an obsession with articulating that Russia is the biggest country, that it has the strongest military, which is obviously not true, and that it's only not so prosperous because of the West. Putin loves to say that World War II was Russia's greatest victory, 
but naturally completely neglects the fact that, if it was not for the Allies, Russia was very likely to lose. Given how many Russians lost their family members in World War II, it is very easy to make the victory a very personal one, making it even more effective when properly used in propaganda. Russia, of course, projects itself as a superpower, which can be a true counterweight to the collective West, and the victory in World War II makes it easier for the propaganda to justify this claim. This is also how Putin managed to change the narrative of the special military operation from denanification by saying that it's now a full-on war with the West. Putin is really making some strong implications that the war in Ukraine is somehow similar to World War II. Take the recently announced delivery of German tanks to Ukraine as an example. Russian media managed to frame it as if there was once again war with Nazi Germany. So for the first time since the Great Patriotic War, German tanks will be thrown against our army, said Viktor Baranitz, the military analyst for Komoslaisa Prava, Russia's most popular daily newspaper. I even wonder if they will cover the Nazi crosses on them. Modern Leopard 2 tanks sent to Ukraine will be destroyed like the Tiger and Panther tanks during the Great Patriotic War. Fight them like your grandfathers did. A quote given by the Russian interior minister. So these quotes demonstrate exactly what we're talking about. Glorifying the victory of World War II and blaming the West for fighting a proxy war with Russia and Ukraine. Despite the fact that Russia was obviously the one who started the war and the West only came to help. Yes, Putin's propaganda has it all. Firstly, the enemy who can be blamed for basically anything, the US and Europe. And remember, this is very similar to how Hitler framed the Jews as Germany's national enemies. Simply put, every effective propaganda needs an enemy. Secondly, a sort of ideal state of things, a vision to which the nation should aspire, be it the Soviet Union, or more generally a strong, internationally respected Russia, whose leader is a masculine know-it-all who can cope with every challenge with ease. Thirdly, a large portion of the nation who are older, not highly educated, and consume mainly state-influenced news outlets. These media are, of course, easily influenced to tell the story. Putin wants Russians to believe, and as there is not only a really a place for these people to find an alternative, it's working. Putin's regime is still widely supported, but we honestly think that the regime is now more fragile than it's been in years. This would answer the question, why the narratives of the propaganda are getting increasingly more far-fetched, like the ones with Russian soldiers fighting Nazi Germany and Ukraine once again, or that the EU would freeze without Russia's energy supplies. Just have a look at this video showing Europeans freezing to death. Yeah, they can't be serious, right? Despite the fact that Russian propaganda may seem almost funny at times, especially to us living in the West, it's important to remember that even though something occurs unbelievably stupid or funny, to someone doesn't mean that more than half of the Russian population won't believe it. It is the years of systematic brainwashing that makes people not even question the news. And this is exactly what has been happening in Russia in the last decades. Be sure to like and subscribe and visit the channel for more Russia-related content.